The employment um, level in the UK fell by the largest amount in a decade. Uh, the figures for between April and June show the youngest and oldest workers, or those in manual op occupations, were worst affected. Now, the Chancellor, Rishi Sunak, said the figures made it clear that the government's, and I quote, unprecedented support measures include the furlough and self-employed support schemes, were working to safeguard jobs and livelihoods. Well, look, let's talk to Dr Miata Van Boulay, who's the chief executive of the New Economics Foundation. Good morning to you, Dr Van Boulay. Good morning. Good morning. Um, how did you react to these figures? You know, the, the tragedy is that they're not surprising. Um, you know, we are um, expecting to see unemployment levels rising to 3 million by the end of this year, 3.5 million by the end of next year. Uh, so we're facing the barrel of unemployment levels we haven't seen since the 1980s. Um, the job uh, redundancies, the job cuts are being announced uh, month in, month out. Um, and so we will expect to see unemployment unless the government acts. Um, and, you know, the chance is absolutely right right that the furlough scheme has been absolutely critical to keeping the numbers of people who would have been made redundant, the numbers of businesses who would have collapsed down. As soon as the government unwinds that scheme, as it's planning to in October, we are expecting a barrage um, in terms of the spike in unemployment and it must do everything it can to stop that. OK, do you want to quickly describe what wind down looks like? So at the moment, the government is essentially saying um, that from uh, this month, it will look, uh, require employers uh, to make a bigger contribution. So it's basically reducing the subsidy that it is providing from the scheme. And then from October, it's essentially going to stop the scheme, which is quite a cliff edge, uh, not least uh, because, you know, there are parts of the economy that are still in lockdown the arts and culture, for example, uh, we know we've got parts of the economy like hospitality, which because of social distancing measures that are being imposed by the government, cannot operate at full capacity. And then we know that parts of the country are going to be asked to go in and out of localised lockdown. So, you know, my point is the crisis that meant the furlough scheme made sense at the start of this pandemic is still there. So it makes absolutely no sense to just say that you're going to stop it. Uh, and when we look to other countries, Germany, France, they are all opting to extend their job support schemes, their version of the furlough scheme, because they recognise that we're still in the eye of the storm of the pandemic. Well, um, the Chancellor was interviewed last week and he did say that he can't or does not intend to row back on his plan. So it, with that in mind, what do we know about companies that are making redundancies or that are expected to announce more redundancies as COVID and the impact on the economy bites? Well, I think it's going to be devastating. And I think many companies are already, based on the, you know, the Chancellor's decision um, and announcement that he wouldn't extend the scheme, many companies are now making the decision to make people redundant. I think there are many companies that are generally thinking about how on earth they're going to survive. Uh, because if you are, say, a restaurant that's currently operating at 50, 60 percent capacity, you know, 70 if you're lucky, you, you will just be breaking even. How on earth you continue to survive if you have to bear the biggest cost, which is the cost of your workers going forward? I don't know, um, which is why, you know, in the end, I actually think the government's going to have to U-turn on this because I think when the numbers uh, of redundancies start being announced in the autumn, when they calculate the cost of that, you know, it, it is in the long term more costly and far more scarring and damaging for the economy to have huge levels of unemployment. It's harder to get people back into the labour market once they're out. I think when it makes the calculation and thinks about the short term cost and does the cost benefit analysis, it will it will realise that it absolutely makes sense, not least because if we're seeing a greater spike in the autumn and a second wave, that it has to put in place some sort of protection. But I think it needs to adapt it. So it's going to have to be more targeted at the sectors uh, that are particularly impacted rather than a blanket furlough scheme. And also think they need to blend in retraining and placement. So, you know, it's going to become clear that certain sectors in the medium term will no longer be able to absorb as many workers. Well, we need to be training those people up, reskilling them and then thinking about placing them in sectors that are creating jobs. I should say uh, a Freedom of Information request, just to put this into context, showed that in June this year, 1,778 firms said they were intending to cut more, well, nearly 140,000 jobs in England, Wales and Scotland. 
Um, and if you want to know the scale of that, if you compare it to June last year, only 345 firms said they had plans to cut jobs, and that was around 24,000. Um, you say a U-turn, um, and uh, you know, on on the um, furlough scheme, or at least on some sort of fiscal stimulus, even if it's not called furlough. What would it? And you know, you've you've mentioned it needs to be targeted. Retraining um, would be needed, and um, looking at certain placements. Which sectors need it, and ultimately, who's going to pay for it, or when are we going to end up paying for it? So I think the sectors that particularly need it are those that are the hardest hit. So we know, you know, the culture and arts, uh, which are essentially still locked down, um, parts of hospitality, uh, tourism, parts of manufacturing, um, and some parts of retail. You know, there are other parts of retail like food that have done very well through the pandemic, but mm. others are generally struggling. And, um, you know, it's harder and it's more complicated uh, to have a targeted sectoral approach. But I think that's what the government needs to do. And other countries are managing it. So I'm sure it's not with with it you know it's not beyond us uh, to do the same in terms of the cost of this you know n- no one is pretending that any of this is cost free but i go back to the fact that doing nothing is costly you know if we allow this mass unemployment if we allow businesses to just collapse recovering and the cost of that will be hugely damaging in the long term and my view is that you know when interest rates are at records low when the cost of you know financing the deficit that the government is accumulating is at 4% the lowest it's ever been since records began this is exactly the time to borrow in order to invest to prop the economy so that we can bounce bounce out of this um, in the medium term.